Topic number one is an email. Hey, I love the videos. Quick question. Which will be the bigger movie, the Batman or Doctor Strange 2 Multiverse of Madness? Can't wait to hear you discuss Philip Troche. Troche? Sorry if I said that wrong. Um, all right, Philip, thanks for the email. Thank you so much. Great, great question. I don't have an answer. Actually, I do. I think 100% the bigger movie is going to be Doctor Strange into the Multiverse of Madness. I think for a plethora of reasons. Um, one of them, of course, it is a Marvel movie, and Marvel is triumphant. Although you can argue Batman is Batman, but Marvel has a better track record than all things DC <laughs> at the moment. Uh, on top of that, uh, the length of Batman and the serious tone of Batman, I think, will detract from people. And adding even more to that, Rob, we'll start with you after this last thought, is Doctor Strange 2 has multiples upon multiples of cards up their sleeve that they could pull out at any time when they think that they're tracking a little bit weaker than they need to be. They could pull out their Professor X. They could pull out their Wolverine. They could pull up their John Krasinski in a billion different roles. They could pull out whatever they want. And they've got that and they have that in their back pocket, just like they had with Spider-Man where they had the three Spider-Man ready to go. So Rob, what are your thoughts? Will Who will be victorious, Batman or Doctor Strange? Well, just for context, we're looking at like the entire box office, right? At the end of the day, which one's going to have more, right? Worldwide? Assuming that's yeah, what we're thinking yeah, of. Sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, I do agree with you. Uh, it'll probably be Doctor Strange 2 in the Multiverse of Madness. Mostly because, yeah, I mean, it's got an entire universe of, you know, how how many, or however many movies it is now. 26 movies or 27 movies. This will be the 28th, I believe. One of the, one of those two, and just for that amount of stuff and all the hype going into it, and the fact that it's a Marvel movie and, and they've been doing quite well, especially with Spider Man, I do think oh. it'll probably be Doctor Strange too. However, there is a factor here that I think could lead Batman into doing much closer to, uh, to like they might be closer than we think, and that's for the fact that you know we've now had three, no four Marvel movies last year. I believe that all four of them. Did, were, did not uh, uh, show in China. And Batman, we know, is going to be in China. So, I mean, it could, you know, out of nowhere, the first superhero movie in a long time showing up in China, that might cause it to, you know, make like $400 million or $500 million. Who knows, right? It could be like a gigantic blockbuster in China. So I could see if Doctor Strange 2 is still not shown in China, just like the others were last year, um, I think that china number could prove to make it closer than we think it could be but right now i think with what we know about both of the movies and the length of uh the batman i do think dr strange 2 will probably make a fair bit more i think it'll make more than a billion you I know mean, i think the batman could still be a question mark as to whether it, where whether it will make a billion or not but uh yeah the right and right now i'm going with dr strange too barry what do you think yeah, I was siding with Doctor Strange too. I think for me, um, as much of a DC fan as I am, I think Batman's a little played out. <clears throat> so I, that's kind of my my biggest critique with the Batman series is it just seems like they're reinventing the wheel. Doctor Strange too kind of caught me off guard just because I did watch um, the WandaVision show and then I took myself and the family to you know Spider Man No Way Home and that kind of lit the fire under all of us. I think Marvel's on a roll here, and I think Doctor Strange 2 is going to continue that, kind of what we've seen in all the different Disney Plus series. <clears throat> I think Batman, again, it'll be solid because it's a new Batman, a new iteration of the Riddler. But again, I'd, I personally would like to see them pull in some other like less known villains and maybe give them kind of a present-day spin. Um, I think if you want to definitely re-energize the Batman series and kind of continue that legacy, that's the way to do it. <clears throat> Box office-wise... Yeah, Doctor Strange 2, I think, in the Americas is going to do really well, just the West in general. The East is the big question, and again, I'm going to go Marvel on this one just because I know in countries like Japan and South Korea, Marvel does have a real heavy presence there already. So the fact that you tack on that name to a movie series will have it do slightly better. And then the Batman, everyone kind of knows Batman too, but not as well as Marvel in the East, in my opinion. So again, you know, I, I never China's... China's kind of a, I don't know, I, it's interesting. I As I've watched kind of some of the Marvel and DC stuff just kind of go back and forth in China, it's interesting what clicks and what doesn't. Um, so I'm going to go vote more on kind of what Japan, South Korea, and South Asia are going to 
allow and what's popular there to kind of make that decision. It's fine. I never, Rob, I never thought of, of the China factor into it, but I don't think, what, what would it make in China? I think like a hundred million. I don't think that's going to be the difference between these two films. I think a uh, hundred is what a hundred is what I think it probably will make, but I'm just saying I, it's possible that, you know, because there has not been like really a superhero movie in China released in like however long, right. Seemingly. Um, I don't know. I, I actually, I don't know if Venom two was released in China that I don't know, but I know from the, from the MCU. Did we lose Rob? Yeah. Uh, buffering. Rob's buffering. I, I look, I think it's a hundred million dollars, whatever. I don't think it's going to make more than that in China, Barry. I think, um, it just, and I think even if it did do that, and Doctor Strange didn't premiere in in China, I just think that there is going to be more of a difference. And I know the movie, I know the Batman is is selling well ticket wise, especially south of the border. But I can tell you, let's just for perspective. I don't live in a big city or anything like that. It's a tiny, but for perspective, let's just use my my theater that i'm going to be going to and let's just pretend that that reflects the world okay my theater for spider-man no way home was so jam-packed that it had to add an extra show time extra a couple extra show time on the thursday screenings okay it had to add it had to add more show times earlier in the day than they wanted to the batman Barry, I haven't bought my ticket for the Batman yet. And I'm going on the first day that I can, but I don't have to buy it now because I'm telling you, and I'm looking at the app, that five, I think it's five or six seats have been sold for that show. And the show earlier than it, there's a showtime, one showtime earlier, but it's in a lesser theater. It has sold zero seats at the moment. So if you use that as a barometer, because I'm not saying this is, you know, this is everything right here, but we use that as a barometer. It te- it's it's telling me that the Batman, as popular as it's going to be, it's not going to hold the weight of of the Marvel type movies. Yeah, I agree. It's funny because I talked to my kids when Spider Man No Way Home came out. I mean, they were all hyped to go see that, and it was just fun. So I think the family dynamic will play a role into that. I see the Batman kind of more your young adult age, not so much a like a family friendly movie, <laughs> just some of the content. Um, <clears throat> but I don't also like, for example, I have a relative who is a big Rob Patterson fan. So I think you're going to get that dynamic added into it too, which will push it off to get a gainable profit, but again, not enough to supersede a uh, Dr. Strange in comparison. Yeah. I can't see it doing better than Dr. Strange. I, it would be great, but it just, um, I, not that it would be great. It's just, it would be, it'd be intriguing if Batman was able to, and that would be, that would be a big boost for DC and Warner brothers, but I don't, think that's going to happen i do have a question for you on the batman though because we got we had uh we're having the batman coming and then we had batfleck before and then we had nolan three the three christopher nolan grounded in reality very you know real ultra realistic batman not ultra realistic but ultra realistic batman movies now we're getting this Reeves one, which kind of almost feels the same as the nolan one do you think that that was is the right call for for this movie or do you think batman is a character that might maybe they should maybe they should parlay him more into a sci-fi fantasy element and make him more you know the clay face poison ivy uh character that you know many of us know and love from the comics yeah i'm probably uh, an outlier on my opinion on batman here but i think what i enjoy and miss is the cheese there's got to be a little more cheesiness to it i love the seriousness and i love kind of like the like the Riddler thinking about how would you adapt that to a to a present world real villain is pretty exciting to think about. But I think we've got to add a little bit of cheese to it. So I, I would like to see a little bit more of that in Batman. I like the sci-fi fantasy element, and I'm I'm probably the first one to say we need a Batman Beyond movie series. I mean that's my wheelhouse. Is I love fantasy and sci-fi and the post the post Batman world with uh, you know cartoon series that I kind of grew up with. I thoroughly enjoyed that, and I mean I could easily see. It's something new, exciting, and different. You could easily do three to six movies just in that spectrum alone. But I think Batman's always going to be a bit of a dark grittiness to it because, again, that's what the comics and cartoon were originally. <clears throat> yeah, um, I grew up with Adam Maybe, West. 
Yeah, I love Adam West. Uh, I can't get enough of him. And, and so, uh, yeah, like the 60s Batman, love that movie purely because I love that era and I love the cheesiness of it. But it's also your traditional stereotype superheroes. So that's my wheelhouse. Um, I think I think they could maybe do more kind of like a high school level, like maybe uh, 15 and up. Maybe tone it down there and you could attract more people in. And you can get, add that family dynamic to push your profit margin over a little bit more. Uh, be another it's approach. Not- <clears throat> it's hard to it's hard to say right now with without seeing the movie, right? <laughs> and, yep. and we are going to get into a little bit. We did. Um, I was able. I was lucky enough to get some emails from people who who have watched on the channel and have watched Rebel Scum podcast who have seen the movie. Saw it last night, and they sent in uh, some little blurbs on their thoughts on it. So that's kind of awesome. We'll get to that later on. Rob will be joining us. His internet crapped out, but he will be coming back. He promises. 